because it's bad. It's a $45 billion tax on consumers. Uh, you basically would be increasing the cost of a car between six and, and eight thousand dollars. Parts uh, are going to be taxed, so therefore even cars that are domestic will go up in price, maybe eighteen hundred dollars. The, the forecast I've seen from the Center for Auto Research is that perhaps it could cost two million vehicles in sales. That's about 700,000 jobs. It's a disaster for the dealers. There's really nothing that you can say that I think is positive about a tariff right now. I mean, the president wants to go after China for unfair trade practices and technology transfers. How does imposing tariffs on U.S. auto imports in the name of national security do that? Who, who gets hurt the hardest? Does China even get hurt at all? No, it really plays into their hand, in my mind. You know, the, the, I think that you can't argue with the goal of level playing field and fair and open trade. We all want that. But if you have a toothache, you don't take it out with a shotgun and make sure that the patient's better off, not worse off. The reason I say that is we're in a global economy now. You know, 10% of total U.S. exports are automobiles. The U.S. auto market is flat. It's not growing. The Chinese market, the Asian markets are exploding. And that's where our manufacturer's growth is going to come from, exporting cars. And by adding a tariff, it really restricts that. What we ought to be doing is talking about lower tariffs to help the U.S. manufacturers. I don't think it helps China. It hurts China. I think it helps them. Jim, if we did somehow end up in a situation where there was zero tariffs globally on autos, would the U.S. benefit as much as some other countries? Is there as much demand in, in the growth markets? You mentioned China or India or wherever it might be. Is there much demand for U.S. autos or are those countries actually more interested in, in buying Mercedes and, and uh, whatever else? Well, no, actually, uh, for the U.S. market, we, we produce large vehicles and trucks for our consumers. But the U.S. manufacturers have great capacity and a lot of, uh, a lot of vehicles that work well in those markets. You know, uh, over a third of GM's current production is exported. Uh, the number one selling domestic car in China is a Buick. Uh, and so, and the, the, the Chinese market is now 27 million. It's 10 million larger than the U.S. market. And so those are the expanding markets, and that's where we ought to be helping our manufacturers become more competitive, invest in new research, new technology, so we can maintain our presence and capitalize on those growth markets. That's the best Very way. Very quickly. It's, yes. Jim, I just want to ask you, I mean, even if you don't agree with the president's approach here, does he have a point when it comes to unfair trade practices from places like the EU as it relates to shipping cars into the U.S. versus us shipping cars. I mean, are we, are, is the auto industry treated fairly? Our, our auto industry is treated as fairly as it has been able to, to ship those cars. The reality is a level playing field helps us all, and, in, and we've never really had the drive and the desire or the investments to really take those international markets on. If we do, I promise you the U.S. manufacturers will conquer those markets if given a fair chance. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.